Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to a brand new week of AutoLine Daily. We're glad that you're back with us today. Say, will automakers get rid of radios in cars before this decade is out? That's what some experts are saying. They predict car radios will go the way of eight tracks and cassette players. They believe drivers will access their favorite radio stations through the internet, via their smartphones, and stream it through their car. But others are not so sure. They point out that in the U.S., 90% of people aged 25 to 54 listen to radio weekly, and it is the top choice for in-car entertainment. Also, over-the-air radio is free versus cell phones that can have expensive data plans and sometimes iffy wireless coverage. You know, this would be a good topic for another Autoline poll. Maybe we'll get it in tomorrow's show. According to preliminary data from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the auto industry will meet CO2 emission targets for the 2012 model year. But some OEMs miss their targets and face fines from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Daimler, BMW, Chrysler, Fiat, Jaguar, Land Rover, Porsche, and Volvo all missed their corporate average fuel economy or CAFE targets last year. In 2011, automakers were fined over $25 million for not hitting their CAFE numbers. The European car market is cratering. Sales are shaky in South America, soft in South Korea, and dropping by double digits in Japan and India. Even so, Wards reports that global vehicle sales in March came to more than 8 million units. Though the total was down ever so slightly from a year ago, strong sales in China, the U.S., and even an uptick in the U.K. kept car plants humming all around the world. Earlier in the year, the Secretary of Transportation in the U.S., Ray LaHood, announced he would step down. Now the Obama administration is set to replace LaHood with Anthony Fox, currently the Democrat mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina. Fox, who's 42 years old, does not have a background in transportation. He worked as a lawyer before entering politics. Fox still must be confirmed by the Senate, but it's hard to imagine he will not get approved. Toyota just pulled the wraps off the 2014 Forerunner. The redesign gets a new exterior look and added interior refinements. Check out the meaner looking front fascia. They want you to believe this SUV really means business. It also gets a new instrument panel and an optional third row for seven person seating. All models are equipped with a 270 horsepower V6 made it to a five speed automatic. And for all you hardcore off-road enthusiasts out there, Mercedes just unveiled its new Unimog lineup. The all-terrain vehicle gets more visibility thanks to a panoramic cab, new multifunction steering wheel, and better HVAC system for improved airflow. It also features a new traction drive system that allows the driver to switch to a hydrostatic transmission, which allows the vehicle to climb very steep grades at speeds up to 31 miles an hour. Variants can be had in four or six cylinder engines that produce anywhere from 156 to 354 horsepower while still complying with Euro 6 standards. New vehicles will begin to roll off the line in September. You've seen NASA transport the space shuttle from its hangar to the launch pad. Well, now road construction crews are using a similar kind of transporter to build bridges far faster than we do today. More on that right after this. Proven on the track and on roads around the world, Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the Eyes on Indy Car Series. A lot of you saw the show that we did with Kirk Stoidel, the head of the Michigan Department of Transportation. On the show, he talked about new construction techniques for bridges. We already showed you the bridge in a backpack approach, but that's for building smaller bridges. 
When it comes to building the big ones, they have a different approach. Take a look. And you were telling me there's some really interesting ways of building bridges on site or whatever. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, there's some really interesting stuff. Uh, the state of Utah has been a real pioneer in, in, in this particular area. And, and um, they built, uh, think of a, a, a bridge over the freeway that you typically see. Uh, they built like four of them in an interchange. So in a big clover leaf, there's four bridges being built, bridge decks. And, and that was for the next four bridges down the road. And once they got them done, they would close the, the freeway and the bridge uh, going over the top on a weekend, on a Friday night, and they would move in this self-propelled um, self modulator, like the space shuttle mover. They'd move it in, they'd pick up the old bridge, and they'd move it out, and they'd wheel a new one in that they built down in the interchange and wheel it up the road and set it in place. And then on Monday, open up the road. Uh, it was absolutely fascinating. Not cheap, but you know, from a user point of view, they, they drove through on Friday on the way to work and drove home. Monday, there's a new bridge. No orange barrels in place. Now, there's lots of activity going off to the side, but the impact of traffic in a very short window. So I, I think that's, uh, that, that's coming. We got you said some, there, there was a lot of safety aspects to it, too, because the, the construction workers are working at ground level. They're not up on top of a bridge you right. know, in its normal position. They're down at ground level, which makes it a lot safer. Yeah, and from a quality standpoint, you know, there's somebody that's standing on the ground working here, this level, instead of 20 feet in the air. The bridge is isolated in an area that doesn't have cars going by it, so the whole thing isn't vibrating. You know, the, the ground shakes when trucks go by and cars go by, and, mm -hmm. and you know, you're trying to get concrete to set. Um, you know, that's going to put microscopic cracks uh, in the concrete that's going to have long-term effect. So I, what I've heard from my counterpart in Utah is, their contractors now uh, request to do it this way. I just love looking at these innovative ways to make bridges. As the United States starts to rebuild its creaky infrastructure, innovative ideas like this are going to accomplish it far faster and even cheaper than anyone thought possible. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for making AutoLine Daily part of your day, and please join us again here tomorrow.